Hello, this is uh, John Rob here with the uh, latest lockdown interview for Underground Shoes with Lucy from Dream Nails. So, hello, Lucy. How are you? Hello, I'm all right, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. So, how's uh, lockdown treating you? I mean, it's kind of settled down a bit now. I think in the early days, I mean, I don't have anything particularly profound to add to everything that's already been said, but in the early days, it was quite erratic. Feel like you're cycling through every emotion every hour. Um, but I feel like it's kind of settling down a little bit now. Everyone's getting into it. I feel a bit calmer. Um, so yeah, it's not so bad. So with the band, I mean, some bands I spoke to have been using this period to their advantage and some bands are just completely, can't, can't work out what to do because they can't go out and gig. But some yeah. people use this time to be creative and write a lot of music. Is, are you, do you fall into that category? Um, at the moment, no. And I think this is something that I've heard so many bands and artists talk a lot about, that they're using this period as a time in which to like be incredibly creative and productive. And if that works for you, I think that's fucking great. But how I feel, and I think all four of us feel, is that this is kind of a time for self-maintenance um, and kind of self-preservation rather than like this exuberant, extreme, like self-improvement and growth. Like this is, this is not a holiday for us. This is not, you know, we all work pretty tough day jobs anyway, but this is not, this doesn't feel like relaxing in any way. So I think the approach that we've taken to it is to kind of sit back, take stock. I mean, for a start, we had to delay our album release. So we were meant to release our album on the 3rd of April. Um, and we've pushed that back to the beginning of September. We were also meant to go and tour. We were meant to go gallivanting around the UK, um, which we've had to delay as well. So that felt quite jarring. Obviously, it was like the necessary and the right thing to do. But we have more just, we are, I have to say as a disclaimer, the most well-oiled punk machine <laughs> you will uh, ever happen upon. <laughs> so, I mean, we've taken this opportunity to answer all our unanswered emails and reorganise our drive, <laughs> our Google yeah. drive. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I think, especially on social media, we've focused on trying to connect with our fans. I mean, we have such an open dialogue with our fans anyway. Um, so we've just, you know, carried on being silly. Um, we've been doing so much stuff, what we've been doing. We've started recently a series called uh, What We've Taught Ourselves to Do in Lockdown. So each of us have been sharing skills that we've acquired in, in lockdown, which has been pretty fun. Um, and we've been doing tutorials for our latest single, Kiss My Fist. Um, I've been doing it on, the, on bucket drums and Anya and Mimi have been doing it on guitar and bass. So kind of just things to help everyone tick along a little bit. So what, what but, skills have you acquired in this period? Well, I'm glad you asked that. So I have really perfected my Yorkshire puddings. Right. I did not realise how easy they, they were and how magnificent they can be. So I did Yorkshire puddings. Mimi, our bassist, made um, eco bricks, which is where you take a, a plastic bottle and you, you shred waste plastic you have. And in, in the ordinary world, you can then send these full plastic bottles off and they can be used for building projects, which is really cool. Um, Anya built a table and Janie made an exfoliating body scrub with sugar and olive oil. And... It's, it's the series is going to continue and it's going to become more abstract as as the weeks progress. <laughs> so stay tuned. Is there any point going back to being in a band? You sound very productive not being in a band. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, is we've, we haven't been writing. I mean, I wish we could say that we've been super creative and we've been writing, but I think we've just been trying to like individually hone our skills a little bit more without putting too much pressure on ourselves. Like... Mm -hmm. I've been doing a, um, a music theory course on Berkeley College of Music website that they've made free, by the way, and it's amazing because I know nothing about music theory apart from my triumphant grade four violin. Um, but no, maybe maybe the future is Yorkshire puddings and eco bricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for the merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll always one eye on the merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you uh, share the house with the rest of the band? 
oh christ no 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 we <laughs> we all live in our respective houses i think that would be so intense have you ever lived in a house with bandmates um well one or two over the years but not all at once no it's not quite like the monkeys in the 60s. <laughs> wow, no, I don't know. I think, well, we spend so much bloody time together when we're touring. Mm. So, I mean, we, we know each other too well anyway. I think we need some space for that. But no, we're, we're having regular contact, of course. Mm. Yeah. So culturally, what's getting you through these times? You listen to a lot of music. Some people listen to music they liked when they're younger so they can forget about the virus. And some people find themselves going for the darkest, most dystopian records possible to soundtrack these times. I mean, are you one or the other or neither? You know what is interesting? I think that like normally I obviously listen to music recreationally as an activity in itself, but I, I think all cards are off the table. And I mean, I use, I've been using music to soundtrack particular activities like my courgette chopping music, my like going for a jog music. What chopping music sound like? <laughs> my, well, I live with Spanish, Spanish women. And so recently my courgette chopping music has been a lot of flamenco, a lot of classical Spanish. Mm. Me and my housemate have been trying to learn the old palmas. Um, so that has been my, my kitchen music at the moment. But actually I haven't, I've surprised, I don't know about you, but I've really surprised myself with my lockdown musical tastes. It's been, I've been listening to a lot of like music that I find comforting and nostalgic, but I've also been listening to a lot of like 80s guilty pleasure, which is interesting because I was neither alive in the 80s. So it's not particularly nostalgic for me. And I didn't re realize that I had a liking for that kind of music before. Um, but that has been the thing that's been giving me pep recently. But I know Janie's been listening to a lot of Bill Withers. Um, Anya's been listening to a lot of Bobby Womack. And actually, Janie, just before this call, told me an amazing Bill Withers anecdote. Can I share it? Of course, yeah. So obviously the song Ain't No Sunshine, are like a, a brilliant, beautiful song. Bill Withers wrote that song before he'd ever had a relationship. He'd never had a relationship or experienced a breakup. He just wrote that song imagining what heartbreak felt like. Wow. Yeah. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. So he spent his whole life trying to see what the song felt like. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing reverse. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting reverse engineering. And apparently he also wrote the song when he was building, he was working at the time building um, airplane toilets and writing music in his spare time. And that's when he wrote that song before he'd ever had a relationship. Wow. So she, she just told me that, it blew my mind. What a thing to get gifted a song like that while you're building the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do those two things connect? Let's so just, what are your 80s uh, guilty pleasures then? Oh, my ultimate, my ultimate. And I think actually this is gonna be my next things I've taught myself in lockdown is, um, I Just Died In Your Arms Tonight by Cutting Crew. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's something to do with, it's just, it's like really, really lively, really, really peppy, but also it's a lot of 80s music like that is very, very extreme emotion. So I think that's why I'm finding it such a good outlet. Like mm -hmm. that song is so fucking dramatic. Imagine if someone said that, that to you. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I've learned to play it on keys. I don't play keys, but that is my first song that I've learned to play on the keys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's my number one quarantine theme tune at the moment. Yeah, what was the other music you listened to? You said you listened to a lot of 80s music. You listened to... Um... Oh, the other 80s music. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't even know. I think I'm going to destroy my... Maybe destroy my credibility by naming it. Wow. But... Um, I don't think there's such a thing as guilty pleasure. You can only like what you like in music, can't you? It's true. Yeah. A lot, lot of Wham. I've been listening to a lot of Wham. I've also been, I have been rediscovering bands that I loved as a teenager, but haven't really gone back too much. So Young Marble Giants, I've been listening to a bit. Um, the Slits, which is more 70s, that I always, obviously, worship. Um, but other than that, I mean, like, yeah, teen, a lot of teenage music, 
so a lot of other early noughties, early noughties floor fillers. I kind of missed out the 90s. Um, mm. But a lot of like Basement Jacks is the soundtrack to my runs and, mm. and that kind of music, which has been fun as well. How do you discover your Marble Giants? That's quite an obscure... But you know what? Corner. I, yeah. I don't even remember. I do not remember. But I, I discovered them in my late teens. And uh, the thing is with Young Marble Giants, I just love it because they sound like, you know, you know, the band leader have been like, okay, guys, we're going to record at this time on this day. And then they all assembled in the studio, but only half of them showed up. <laughs> and, and that was, and then they were like, okay, fuck it. We're just going to make the record anyway. And so it, not that they sound unfinished in any way, but there's just like something like musically, instrumentally that's missing that I found so interesting. Um, but I, I honestly can't remember how I came upon them. They may well have been recommended or it might have just been a, a Spotify recommended listen a very long time ago. Yeah, they are quite amazing. Yeah, they are amazing, yeah. So do you, what other music do you listen to? Uh, is, that, is that pretty well your musical sphere that you're covering there? Or is, there, or is there anything else that's sort of come in? Or are you, are you taking the time to go and discover things as well? Um, I mean, like, I'm not... Uh, yes, discovering. I'm taking a lot from the kind of classical Spanish music. I've been listening to cumbia and like, Mexican, and I was in South America at the end of last year. And so um, I love that kind of music as well. But, I mean, I'm finding it difficult to discover to set my mind to discovering things i've been listening to a lot of uh contemporary jazz um contemporary soul through like i love that apple music playlist i think they've got really really good selections that are updated all the time coco rocco um i don't know all that kind of stuff but my, our musical sphere as a band you know, before before all this happened, we were listening to a lot of Rage Against the Machine, Blink-182. They're the kind of bands that influence us musically. But I think personally, we do all have quite different tastes. So it's pretty sprawling and that doesn't necessarily consciously um, influence our, our songwriting. Or maybe it does, I don't know. Yeah, maybe after this, however long this lasts for, it could be like a whole explosion in different directions. <laughs> oh my God. I fucking hope so. I fucking hope so. Because I've been thinking about that in, in relation to the Slits and like their first record is like, you know, a classic punk record, but with like dub and reggae. And then when they came around with their second album, so underrated, it was like much more reggae influenced. And I just feel like it wasn't taken enough notice of. So I don't know. I mean, the first album's not yet been released, but maybe yeah. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen with the second. You've got ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I I know, as ever, as ever. That's how we do things, though. <laughs> so you read a lot. You take the time. You know, people catching up on lots of books have been mean to read for years. Or is it just too mm. hard to concentrate? Yeah, I mean, I I have read a couple of books. I'm reading. I'm reading a book about population control and food politics, which is pretty heavy, called Seeds of Destruction, oh, um, yeah. which is really interesting um and i but i find myself again like i'm just comfort reading i don't have harry potter's with me but i've got um well as i was speaking about the slits this is a massively influential book for all of us mm -hmm. not just musically this viv albertine's closed music boys i just love how it's an amazing snapshot into the 70s punk scene in london but then the second half of it how it's just about like her you know her conception of her own of herself as an adult and as a, a as a mother and as a wife and then trying to make music again i just think it's the most fucking punk thing i've ever encountered in my life so i've been enjoying rereading that have you, and her, have you read her second book yeah and you know what i have read her second book but i found her second book I, I haven't been able to reread that because I have you have you read them both as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I find her second the first so book, gorgeous. Oh, it's, it's a tough book, isn't it? Yeah, it's a t bloody tough book. I mean, it's amazing, but she's so 
raw and I, I mean I know that's sort of a cliche word to use but it's so emotionally raw and brutal and to be able to look at yourself and analyze your life your relationship with your mother and your daughter in such a brutal brutal brutally honest way I mean it's incredible but I, I, at this present time I don't feel like I can do that to myself again <laughs> maybe it's not the right time <laughs> not, not the right time John no, not quite <laughs> <laughs> so what else have you been reading then um i've been reading well a book that i'm always re-reading like i'm constantly reading is is this book it's wise children by angela carter have you read it no but i know it yeah it's um, it's it's amazing and i i just i did it for my a level and the beauty of this copy is it's actually full of my a level banal um, annotations. Oh, I love it when people write in books. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And I just like, this is literally my 17 year old self writing like the word irony next to certain, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next to certain passages. <laughs> but it's just like, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of feminist literature and it's fucking funny. And it's about these twins that live in Brixton, they're song and dance girls. And it reminds me of my nan and it's just bawdy and fun and and touching and i'm always it's the book that i pick up if i can't sleep mm -hmm. you know and i just read a little i'm always reading it so as soon as i finish i just go back to the beginning and start again mm -hmm. and so that has been something that's been a, a comfort as well for sure so you're watching a, a lot of tv box sets or are you like a news hound and you just or were you a news hound at the beginning of this and just got sick of the avalanche of bad news <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, no. I at the at the beginning, I don't know. Maybe like everyone, I felt a kind of a wartime. What I assume was like a wartime compulsion to like listen to the daily press conferences and like listen to Boris addressing the nation and like even listening to the bloody Queen addressing the nation. I mean, it was it was so so surreal. I'm sure. Did you find it as well? It was like. I yeah. don't know. All of a sudden, I was hanging. On, I was hanging on their words in a way that I never had before, and that was—that's not indicative of the trust that I have in the government at all. Um, but I, I've given up on the news completely. Um, yeah, I think at the beginning I was paying more constant attention to it for fear more than anything else. Mm. But recently, oh man, what have I been watching? Well, I got a subscription to Mubi which is amazing for two reasons one you don't have to have that agonizing netflix scrolling through forever deciding what to watch because they just put up a selection of it they put up a new film every day but also it makes you feel so bloody clever like <laughs> all the films on, <laughs> all the films on movie even if they're a bit trashy makes you feel very smart because they've been curated <laughs> um, so, so what, what films you've been watching so I was watching, I, the best film I watched on movie is this film called Baccarat, um, which is a Brazilian film. It's about um, an indigenous, an Afro-indigenous um, Brazilian community. It's set in the present day, it came out, it was made last year or the year before that. Um, and it's about this community in rural northern Brazil who um, encounter or, or who are sieged upon by a group of imperialist, murderous tourists it's kind of like black mirror-esque if you're into that kind of thing but it was the fucking one of the best films i've ever seen so i really 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 recommend that it was incredible um other than that i've been watching a lot of harry potter i've been watching on some early disney i got disney plus as well so i watched snow white watched cinderella um what else i watched eyes wide shut last week oh, yeah. which yeah. which is a good one and it's interesting because i was the reason i thought even to even watch that is because i was listening to frank ocean and he mentions that film a few times and i was like oh i actually i've just you know he's mentioned that i can now go i've got time to actually go and watch the film so it's been really nice being able to like draw the uh, like you know understand the connections between 
art and books and poetry and film and music mm -hmm. um and kind of like follow through the influences and inspiration which is something that i always mean to do and just never have the time or the inclination to so in a way uh if and hopefully we look back on this time 10 years from now you'd be looking at this very profound time in life not not just because it's a big world situation but because you've made all these connections and you know you went into all the culture a little bit deeper this is this is quite a big thing really isn't it yeah that's true actually i don't yeah. think of it like that but i hope so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah i mean what how, how old what you what age are you now i'm 28 28 so i mean for people in their 20s this is this is the thing isn't it? it's like people our age go about punk rock forever that was our life-changing moment yours just bigger <laughs> <laughs> People say, do you remember before the virus? And then people say, God, that seems weird now. Yeah. I know, I know. I like. I wish my nan was still alive so I could just be like, what was it like in the war? Like, yeah. did people see an end point? Like, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be much more boring to be, you know, at least now we can, we're kind of culturally overstimulated and we can access literally everything. If anything, there's too much. It's like mm -hmm. my mom calling me up being like oh I did a I did a virtual tour of the British Museum today <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 I read an article <laughs> beginning saying if this had happened 20 years ago we'd all be just on the phone phoning each other up and that'd be it yeah yeah <laughs> literally, it was literally. Before, luckily it happened now <laughs> I know I know it is it, it, mu it must be a blessing somewhere <laughs> somehow so sometimes you think about, you know, uh, what it's going to be like afterwards, you know, for, say for the band or musically or creatively or just the world in itself. Are you, some people are optimistic about the future and some people are pessimistic. You know, people say, now we have the opportunity to make the world a better place, which is a wonderful mm -hmm. idea. But I personally get a horrible feeling that it's going to be more of a Trumpsville kind of world, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you sit, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, at the beginning... I was definitely more in camp optimism and I was like, you know, this is going to be a really positive thing. This is going to be, you know, after this collectively as a society, we're going to come to understand and appreciate, you know, labor, working class jobs, like working in the supermarket, the bin men, mm -hmm. um, cleaners, care, like people that work in, in care as well. Um, and I felt at the beginning, there was a real rallying of, the vulnerable um, and, you know, a real like positive community spirit. But I mean, I don't know if this is a reflection of my own mental state, but I do just feel like it, it might just fizzle out. Mm. Um, and I think it will be difficult to retain. And I don't know, like, it's interesting Like my day job, I'm a, I work, I'm an advice worker for refugees and, and asylum seekers and migrants. And, you know, at first, like, it was interesting because I, I, I don't know, I don't want to talk about this too much, but like, a lot of my clients didn't seem that perturbed. They were, you know, they were kind of taking a lot of this in their stride because this they've lived through crisis, mm -hmm. you know, an extreme situation already. And it's just like now it's happening to white Europeans, like, suddenly it feels like the end of the world. Um, but I don't know, I, I now feel that people are, I think everyone's spending too much time indoors thinking about themselves. Mm. And, and I just, I don't know how that's going to translate when everything reopens again and when things start, you know, gearing up again. I like to think that there will be more respect and more appreciation um, for community um, and for vulnerable people and for people with disabilities, working classes, but I don't know if that's going to come to fruition necessarily. What do you think? I think it's going to be a more extreme continuation of the situation before where half the world was trying to be more appreciative and more liberal and the other half of the world was rampaging down the Farage, Trump, Brexit kind of line. So it's uh, mm -hmm. that those will polarise more, you know. So your job as a punk rock band is to uh, make some noise about it. <laughs> oh my, and you better believe we will. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good place to finish the interview. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks for your time, Lucy. That was great. And um, hopefully, I'll, hopefully, I'll see you uh, when you play Manchester on the other side. Oh my God! Please, please, yeah. I beg. <laughs> now you know you got my email now, so you know. Um, so because I do, I do the website louder than war, 
and you've been on yeah. there since. In fact, uh, there was a review of you from about six years ago on there. Like, like a really, six years. or maybe maybe, years. maybe five, five years, but quite a long time when you just started. So that was quite interesting. We're in nappies. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got anything coming up, just email me and send me some stuff. Definitely, definitely, we'll do, we'll do. Well, brilliant. Thanks for your time. Great to speak to you. Right. That's yeah. a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's Bye. been great. Bye.